Followers of the channel will know that I recently got an embroidery machine, which has brought me to the edge of a slippery slope. Today's video is going to be all about me setting up the additional things so far that I have for my embroidery business that I'm starting and things that I have found that are needed. I mean, we could air quote that one or leave it plain to make things a lot easier and actually get more work done. Hey guys, Sam here and welcome back to Samcraft. That's right, today's video is all about the additional things I have found already that I needed for my embroidery business. And of course, I know that's not all of it. These are just the first things, but also things that I put in place to organize my space, create an embroidery station of my workshop, and just get a grasp on things from an organizational standpoint. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The first task is building a custom embroidery table. All right, to call this a custom embroidery table might be a little bit of a stretch of the imagination. There is nothing that makes this specifically for embroidery other than the fact that I'm building it just to be used for embroidery. So let's go ahead and get that um, myth out of the way that Sam has not found some kind of special fancy table setup that is for embroidery. It's more that Sam is going to build a table to sit beside his embroidery machine and use it in that way. That being said, this is a very basic table construction. It is very, very similar to the laser tables that I built in my workshop very soon after completing this construction. And that means it is a plywood top. It is a two by four skirts or apron around the table. And in this case, some two by six boards for the legs. This is very basic. It's nothing fancy, but suits the needs for me very well. With the table completed, I could then move on to some wall-based organization. So getting on Facebook and online forums and in embroidery groups in general, I kind of polled the group to say, hey, what's everybody using for your wall-based organization? Do you have French cleats? Do you have pegboard from the hardware store? Or do you have anything special? A lot of votes were for pegboard out of the hardware store. Okay, actually, truthfully, the first vote was, I don't have anything. I'm interested to see what people use. That's understandable. The second vote was pegboard from Home Depot or Lowe's, but it's kind of meh. The third vote was not as popular as far as the number of people who have it, but those who have it have rave reviews. So that's what I decided to do. I purchased some pegboard style panels from Ikea. This is their Skatis or Skatis name brand. There'll be a link to it down below. You can check it out. These are some ready to hang all hardware included pegboard style wall based organization panels that are available in a variety of sizes and finishes. In my case, I decided to get black. That way it contrasted and kind of popped against the white walls of my workshop, but also tied in the black of the pegboard and the black top of the embroidery table to kind of make it feel a little more cohesive.
So installation of the pegboard is very straightforward and easy. I did, however, add some screws here and there to make sure it was more secure to the wall than what you get default from Ikea, but that's okay. I definitely like the fact that they are not just your standard pegboard. They have a little hook system built into it, and it seems like things are a little more sturdy. So far, I don't really have anything specialized for the embroidery equipment, but there are several things that I've been prototyping and creating on my own. So when I I have those done you know I will share them but for now I'm just using basic hooks some kind of straight ones for my frames the hat system and all of that and then some basic little hooks for smaller objects there's a couple little bins in here and there that I got while I was purchasing everything and it works out okay for general stuff but I have already found that I really want some specialized things that I can't find anywhere so I'm just going to develop it and make it myself why not? It's the perks of having a full workshop and the capabilities to do this kind of stuff. And who knows, maybe it'll be something useful for other people with this same pegboard system or other embroiders or just maybe anybody in general. So you can see what I decided to do right here behind the embroidery machine was basically create like a tunnel or a hoop up and over it. I really like how this looks. It is a great use of this wall space while not being too redundant or wasteful by putting anything behind the machine. The machine is still on wheels so it can be moved if I need to but otherwise there's enough clearance to the right and the left to get to the wall above it and around it and I really think it's going to work out great. The way I have it set up right now is with my mighty hoop frames up here. They're kind of large as far as physical objects to take up space. I may not have to get to the big ones that often and I think at least for now it's probably going to be an okay use of things. The way I have my table set up I'll show you in a little bit is to have my hooping station here and given you're going to go back and forth depending on what you're doing so they may not live up here all the time but at least for a when they're not in use put them up here out of the way. I think this will work out pretty good. Down here to the right of the machine is where I have some of the little cubbies and smaller things. I think it works okay, but it's also an area where I want to get some specialized storage that I mentioned earlier, especially my thread spools. I have some here. There are more over there under the table, and I'm probably going to add a lot more over time. It's just one of the things. You get customer logos, customer colors. You may want different thread styles, thread finishes, and all of that, and you're just going to end up with a lot of thread in the end. So one of the things I would like to personally do is put my thread in an area where I can easily see what I have, how much I have, see the colors I have to offer, and I think that's just going to lend itself to be something mounted on the wall. For the time being, though, the little cubbies over here are something. They are doing something at least. They're holding things. And then is what you're going to see in a second. I have another large furniture piece that was purchased to put in place for organization that is really doing the lion's share of organization for this space. Speaking of that organizational furniture, let's go ahead and roll the footage on what exactly I purchased. That's right guys, I bought a toolbox. This one specifically is a Craftsman brand from Lowe's, but it's not that this was the end all be all best. This was the one that fit my criteria. So first of all, affordable. Second, good quality, durable, not gonna waste my money. And then third, in stock, available locally. And I guess fourth, black, so that it matches the area. This one fit all the boxes. And in addition, was on sale since right now it's like Memorial Day, Father's Day kind of timeline. So, hey, win, 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 win. Either way, I like it. Actually, I really, really like it. This is the first piece of furniture for organization that I've purchased, and I just really like it. I love the multiple drawers to where you have enough room for everything you want to put in them, but not so much room or so deep of a drawer that things start to get buried. I also really like the fact that this is visually very clean, very 
soothing, it's not distracting, it's not busy, and it just makes my eyes happy. And I guess lastly, I really like the fact that if things change and I just outgrow this or decide, you know what, this isn't really footing the bill for me anymore, this is always still a toolbox. I can always put the caster wheels under it, I can put the handle on it, I can finish the assembly, so to speak, and sell it or use it somewhere else. All right, guys, bear with me as we do a little bit of run and gun. I'll try not to shake you too much. So right here is the star of the show, right? This is the Smart Stitch 15 needle embroidery machine. This is what started all of this. Behind it, we have our pegboard system, our IKEA Skatis. Skatis? I don't know how to pronounce that one, but it's that. Looks good, nice. And then we have our table, which is very, very handy. This is the second thing that started all of this. It's not very deep. I mean, it's like maybe 20 something inches deep, not even a full two feet, but it is perfect. It is at a height that is just below the windows. So it is a little bit taller than countertop, but it's useful, a great size, and most importantly, was easy to build and relatively affordable. Sticking with the theme of the table, here to the right, we have my Mighty Hoop system. I will show this to you guys in a video a little bit later. I want to do a dedicated video talking about hoop systems. Why do I have it? Why do I buy it? Is it worth it? Is it not? Spoiler, yes, it's worth it. And that kind of stuff, how to use it. But otherwise, the hoop system is there for my shirts, patches, things like that on shirts. This next one is the freestyle. That one I use a lot for kind of one-off aligning of things very handy and then way over here to the left that is the hat station or the cap station for the embroidery machine down below the table starting at the left we have a couple of totes of storage and organization of extra things right now there are canvas totes in there some aprons and other items that are new fresh clean items to embroider and sell there's a trash can there because hey got to put trash in its place and then of course the box Speaking of the box, let me show you guys what's inside it, at least for now. All right, starting on the top left drawer, we have all of my thread. At least that's where it's living for now. The next two drawers are actually empty. Didn't have anything to go in there just yet. And then the bottom two is storage of hats for now. I don't intend to keep a large number of hats in stock. Those I'll generally just order as customer orders come in. But these are ones that I purchased to kind of try out, see colors, make some tests and all of that and it's good to have them on hand. Having them in the drawers keeps them nice and clean and easily accessible for me to see what I have, how many I have, and that kind of thing. Over here on the right side of the box, starting at the top drawer, working our way down, we have some cutaway stabilizer, then we have some tearaway stabilizer and stuff like that. Then in the other drawer, we have some 3D foam for some puff embroidery projects, along with a miniature iron. Yes, real guys use an iron in embroidery land. Well, at home too. An ironing board or ironing pad is what you see kind of rolled up there. And then below that, yep, more hats. And some beanies and toboggans down at the bottom. So as of right now, the practical storage, I mean, honestly, the hats is not a great use of the cost of the toolbox, but having them here, having them clean, put up, and readily accessible is a benefit for me, at least right now. On the back wall above the embroidery table, for now, I've got a bunch of my stabilizers, top dressing, and other roll objects just sitting on some pegs. This is a temporary solution. This is one of the areas that I want to incorporate and build something specific for this use for the application. And I look forward to showing that to you guys as soon as I get it done. Over to the right, we have my cutting mat. Just a place to put it. Not sure if it'll stay there forever. And then otherwise, largely, just empty space. But that's good, right? The last thing I would probably want is to have all of the wall organization completely filled up the first couple of days that I've had it. That would tell me that I probably didn't buy enough or something bad. So seeing blank space, room to grow, room to change is a good thing in my book. All right, guys, there you have it. There is Sam's uh, current, possibly ultimate embroidery station setup. At least what I have for now. And like I said, it's the slippery slope. I'm falling down, but I'm not at the bottom. I don't know where this will end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing me put at least this much together. If you got any questions, comments, ideas, let me know. If anything here, you're like, wow, that's really cool. Let me know. It's great to get the feedback about what's good or bad or helpful or just terrible. And you guys leaving comments is the only way I know. 
Otherwise, you got any questions or comments, anything you want to see about embroidery, or hey, lasers as well. They're still here. They're just on the other side of the shop. Definitely leave me a comment as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching as always. Take care. I'll see you guys next time in the workshop. Is it still a workshop? I don't know. It's a Sam Craft shop.